Come on, I warned you. I warned you. Did you rehearse that sequence heavily? Was a lot of it improvised? And how did the two of you bounce off each other with that that reveal? That reveal that reveal that okay. <laughs> Shane, you want to start? Well, these are these are fabulously talented people who have the ability to make um, structures seem like improv. Uh, they knew the scene backwards and forwards and they performed it and they performed it in such a loose, wonderful way that it makes it seem like it's, it's just occurring in the moment and they're just dancing and thinking on their feet. Um, no, this was, we, we covered it like every other scene. We shot it like every other scene. It's probably the truest to the script of most any scene in there, and it's one of the best because of the talents of the people involved. And in particular, just seeing uh, Sir Ben open up in that was, at the end of that day, at the end of the shooting day, the crew spontaneously applauded after that scene. Uh, gentleman in the first row over there. Uh, this, is, that follows, this follows on. So Ben, um, what was your reaction when you were handed a script which suggested that you were playing a man with more than a large streak of theatrical ham running through his back? <laughs> and does it presage a leer from you, maybe in Croydon, in the future? <laughs> oh, I felt completely at home um, <laughs> on reading the script. Um, of, of, of the many devices that the Mandarin employs, um, all of them are rooted in observation on my part. Um, and I won't name names, but some members of the audience might even recognize that I'm doing them, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> um, beautiful script, and as, as Shane rightly points out, there's very little deviation from what was on the page by Drew and Shane. We, I love good writing. There it was. There was our map. There was our mandate, and we we followed it pretty well to the letter. A uh, question in the front row here, please. Uh, question, yes, Nathan. Shane, uh, the film and yourself are at the forefront of a wave of movies that are getting co-financed or co-produced in the East as well as in the West. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in many ways the trailblazer for what's coming over the next few years? I I don't know that the the. I'm at the forefront of that. I think that this movie represented an opportunity to uh, strike a deal and, and do a co-financing thing. It's not something I know a lot about. It's something I let other people negotiate and then I sort of participate as, as needs be. And um, I think it'll be interesting to see the way that this is co-released with a separate version in uh, China and one here. I think it's all fascinating stuff, but it's way over my head, frankly. <laughs> in terms of giving you any predictions. Uh, young gentleman in the front row there. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jan. Um, I'm a student at the Royal Hall University of Mountain Media Art Department. First of all, I would like to thank you all for making such an amazing film. It's a great honor to Fireman's legacy and 50th anniversary. <coughs> I have a question for Mr. Downey. But first of all, sir, I think you're one of the most extraordinary actors of our time. I've seen all of your films since down, and so I would like to thank you uh, my question is, um, <laughs> 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 my question is, <laughs> this film, your character has a uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and despite all the danger and the chaos that he experiences in this film, he still keeps on moving forward bravely without going, looking back. And how did you manage to achieve that balance? Because so many superheroes nowadays in the big screen tend to cry over those things or go into depression, but your superhero Tony Stark, he, he's just not brave, but he's truly the innocent blind man. How much did you pay him? <laughs> how much? How much did you pay him? This is definitely Just a say how much you paid him. <laughs> Let's have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
again, I, I think what I really liked about this was, you know, in a post-adventurous world, we just ask questions. Wouldn't he be a little bit freaked out? And then that wound up being part of the theme, you know? I mean, we're, uh, Sir Ben is right in that, you know, some of the stuff we just, we didn't rest on our laurels, but we exacted it, you know, as it was. And a lot of the stuff, we were very flexible and we were often talking about things. I think what Sir Ben isn't telling you is that there was other scenes and parts in the movie where essentially we would throw any and every idea we could at him and he would bounce it back and it could have been in the movie because he was throwing uh -huh. heat uh -huh. like it was uh, the sixth game of the World Series and he was the winning pitcher. Um, and Don and I would just kind of uh, play off that. But also with, with, you know, Gwyneth and I have made a habit of doing that with Tony and Pepper and when Rebecca joined us as she operates in both the past, Tony's past, she's kind of the prime mover of the story moving forward. All these things we try to be as flexible as possible, but the trauma thing to me was just, again, asking the question and getting away from this, we can't beat the spectacle of Avengers, so let's ask the, wouldn't it actually be like this if we were back in Tony's world? Thank you. Great. I adore you. Um, just, yeah, just along from where you are, the microphone, and then we'll come to you, sir. Hi, Ben from Men's Fitness Magazine. I've got a two-part question for Robert, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> uh, a two-part question. Um, you're in great shape for the film. Was there anything specific you had did in terms of training or gym work to get in shape for the role? And then the second part, uh, of all the film roles you've done, uh, which was the most physically challenging and why? I'm required to say that I was doing some Tracy Anderson training. One of the pals really is central to. Um, I hate to say it, Don is actually in better shape than I am. No, no. And he's more physically capable. But I'm not going to let it stay like that. <laughs> no, that's um, true. When fitness magazines are asking me what I'm up to, that's what moves me. <laughs> I want there to be no question that the dialogue between Don and I on who's more fit is going to end with Iron Man 17. <laughs> Old guys jacked up on growth hormone. That's it. <laughs> I think, I think any of us uh, could say that who, who've been around before. So I think for Don and Gwyneth and I, we all moved around more than we uh, <laughs> expected to. And yeah, I think this one was, this one was tough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gentlemen over here, have a microphone there, sir? This a question for uh, Shane Black. And obviously this is a huge franchise, uh, Juggernaut of a movie. Did you have any sort of trepidation getting on board that, that Juggernaut? And just as a follow-up, um, you're sitting here uh, with Robert, so I have to ask you, is there any chance of, of a return to the characters you brought us in, Kiss Kiss, Bang Bang, and Any Shame? Um, <coughs> taking this, this, the second first, um, yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. But no, because it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it just didn't make the, the coffers Overflow. It, the, the, no one was paying to see Kiss Kiss Bang Bang when they hit needed here. to. It was a hit here, but you, you, yeah, but this is what, what's Britain's box office comparatively to the US? It's like a half. Let's not do the math. All right. <laughs> the point is this: What was the other part of the question? That's what I want to know. The quality. The qu oh yeah, the bigness of it. The big. Yeah, you know, it's it doesn't matter because we action. If you make an action film, it, I think we all know. Uh, what that's supposed to be, but it's just quantifying it. So it's the extent to which we can access what we already know. Action doesn't change if you're doing a car chase or if you're doing science fiction. And more important than that is the ability to, to generate a story that works. Because I think, and this is very important uh, for me, movies look great nowadays for the most part. Movies sound great. You don't hear someone say, I just went to see the new big budget movie. God, it sounded shitty. <laughs> because technically things are perfect. Um, the stories are not always engaging. They're not always perfect. And so as long as I have a chance to come on board and sort of dictate or try to give flesh to a story that makes sense and works and I have people on board to collaborate with like Robert Downey, I know we're going to make a shape. We're going to make a stew that could be fun. I don't care how much it costs or what scale it's at. The story is what's important. The spectacle is simply a part of telling that story. And it's not the other way around. The tail doesn't wag the dog. So the bigness of the picture to me is the least interesting thing about it. And the innovation and the talent behind it and the funniness of it and all that stuff is what I'm most proud of. And I think all these people here have done a marvelous job. Thank you. I'm going to offer the choice to you.